Welcome to Jehovah Jireh Bible Church. I'm your lead servant pastor, Andre Andrews. It's truly our pleasure and our honor to have you check into our virtual sanctuary this morning. Um, those who are watching on today, if you could do me a big favor, there's a button at the bottom that says subscribe. If you can hit that subscribe button, you'll have access to anything that Jehovah Jireh Bible Church is doing. And, and, and we're doing major things, but it's all because of you. And we want to share the gospel message to those who don't know Christ. And we want to share it effectively in an ever-changing world where the gospel is always consistent. Uh, before we open up in our sermon, we would like to um, start off with prayer uh, for those who who just are dealing with the challenges of life, uh, sickness, um, financial situations, whatever it is. Prayer is our only means of communication with our Heavenly Father. And he says we can come boldly to the throne of grace. So let's, let's have a time of prayer before we go into the sermon. Eternal Master, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, for uh, you are the God that sits high but yet looks low. Uh, you are the God that, that blew the breath of life into our nostrils and made us living souls. Not only are you God, but you're a Father. Lord, you take care of us each and every day. You keep us from danger seen and unseen. Lord, you're a comforting Father. Lord, you have sent your spirit that's imputed in us now that, that uh, administers comfort to us when we're going through the trials and the tribulations of this life. And you told us in, the, in your word, uh, Lord Jesus, that, that we would have trials, we would have tribulations in this life, but to be of good cheer for you overcame the world. And with you becoming the overcomer, you made us overcomers as well. Because you grafted us back into the family of God. Now we are heirs and joint heirs with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, thank you that you are still in the healing and the miraculous business. That you have more medicine in the hem of your garment than the whole entire medical pharmaceutical industry could ever come up with. Because those who are... Uh, administering this 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 medicine to to us uh, can only do it because you gave them the revelation to come come up with it. So Lord, I just pray that you would just sit healing to those who are sick, those who are shut in, those who are dealing with uh, a financial lack. Lord, be be the God that will supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory, Lord. And more than anything, Lord, let us seek you first. Let us seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto us. Lord, we come to you, Lord, in desperation, Lord, for we know we can do nothing outside of you, Lord. We need you desperately, Lord. So prick our hearts, Lord. Open our minds, oh God, to see the living Christ. Lord, we ask for those who, who, are, who are elderly, Lord, that you would just send a, a helping hand to those, Lord. They, they, it's, it's, a, it's a rough time in the world, and you're the only antidote to the sickness of this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, our subject topic this morning is obedience. And we're going to be coming from the book of Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 26. That's 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 26. And I'll be reading out of the NIV version of scripture this morning. And our topic is obedience. So if you have your Bibles with you, um, or your tablets or your phones, whatever you have God's word on it. Um, take them and, and raise them above your head and repeat after me. Living water, living water, fill us till we thirst no more. And our 
our scripture this morning from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 26. It reads, Therefore, with mind that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, Live out your time as for as foreigners here in reverent fear, for you know that it was not with perishable good, perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you have been, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other. Love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable seed, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. May you've been blessed by the hearing and the reading of the word of God. Let us pray before we go into our sermon on this morning. Eternal Father, I thank you, O oh God. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to handle your sacred oracles, Lord. For without you, I can do nothing, Lord. I am a weak mortal in every aspect, Lord. I am, I am frail. You know, I am finite and you are eternal. Lord, you know of my imperfections, you know my shortcomings, you know me inside and out, but Lord, I stand before you as an empty vessel, asking to be filled up by you, so you can work in me and through me, that your word would come out of these lips, and it would accomplish everything you intended for it to do, and it will not return unto you, Lord. Lord, hide me behind Calvary's rugged cross. You do the preaching, you do the teaching, Lord that someone may come to the living Christ this morning, that someone may be saved by your mercy and your grace, O oh God. Let every heart be broken, every mind open to the revelation of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I was reading an article yesterday um, while I was at my, my uh, occupation, not my vocation, uh, about Arabian um, horses for some strange reason. It was in a, um, in a men's health magazine and it had an article on, on Arabian horses and Arabian horses go to a, a, a rigorous training in the deserts of the Middle East. The trainers require absolute obedience from the horses and test them so to see if their training is complete. The, the final test is nearly beyond the endurance of any living thing. What the, what the trainers do, they force the horses to do without water for many days. And they turned them loose. And of course, they watched them run toward the water. Just as they get to the edge, ready to plunge and, and take a drink, the trainer blows the whistle. And the horses are 
horses completely trained in obedience stop and they turn around and they pace back to their training. See, they, they, they stand here quivering, wanting water, but they wait in perfect obedience. When the trainer is sure that he has their obedience, he gives them the signal to go and drink. Now, this may sound severe and per, perhaps um, inhumane, but when 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 you are in the uh, 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 wide open spaces of the Arabian desert with no no paths, no pathways, no no trails, and you entrust your life to a horse, you better had a well trained obedient horse. See, you, 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 you have been purchased with the, with the blood of Christ. Your life's purpose is to glorify him in holy obedience. In the Petrine letters testify to Peter's obedience to Jesus Christ. Despite denying Jesus during his trial, Jesus exhorted Peter. Uh, to encourage the others that had to turn back after Peter had came to himself. This, this is in the book of Luke chapter 22 and verse 31 and 32 as, as Peter denies Christ, but he later sees, Jesus later sees Peter and he, and he tells Peter to take care of his sheep when he turns back to himself after the denial and then 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 Peter did return and in obedience to Jesus devoted the rest of his life strengthening believers feeding Jesus sheep in John 21 verses 15 through 17 his two letters testify of this when we know little of his relationship with the recipients, but we do know that Peter wants to encourage them not to not to do what he did in difficult times. He 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 wanted them to to be steadfast. He wanted them to be obedient. He wanted them to do it Jesus' way. Uh, he didn't want them to give up when when pressured about taking a stand for Jesus. Rather, they should persevere. In 1 Peter 5 and verse 12, according to 1 Peter, society made it difficult for these believers. Much like today, it's, it's difficult to be a, a Christian um, these days. They notice their changed lifestyle and and some don't like what they see. Uh, consequently, they've been rough on them. You know, it, it, they can't catch a break. They've been persecuted. They're being they've been crucified. They're being uh, uh, tarred and feathered and burnt in oil for the sake of the gospel. Peter writes to encourage these persecuted believers on remaining faithful Christians in a not so Christian world. He writes to give them God's perspective on on, on, on them and, and society ultimate reality. First Peter is a is a how to do manual of sorts and and the writings are unique and and the and, and the clearest of them are in the New Testament epistles on this subject. When entrusting the spread of the gospel, the life of these young Christians. Peter wants them to be sure and well equipped and obedient to Jesus Christ. He wants them trained and obedient to Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 1, as we discover Peter's call to holiness through the lifestyle of obedience to Christ. See, the command of obedience through hope and uh, relationship with Christ in verses 1 
and, uh, chapter 1, verses 13 through 16, as we read in our opening text. Peter references God's commands, be holy because I am holy. Uh, cites uh, Leviticus 19 and 2, a favorite passage of early Christian uh, eth uh, ethical teachings, although some words appear elsewhere in Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 40 and also in Leviticus 20 and verse 7. He encourages the readers not to conform to worldly desires they had when they lived in ignorance. This, this makes it clear that one of what the, the main one of the main relationships that we should have is with God and, 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 and through Christ it, we are enlightened to be made aware of his obligation to live a holy life. See we, we, we have been bought with a bloody price. We were purchased by the blood of Christ. So we owe him our obedience. We owe him our holiness. We owe him our life. Christians are without excuse when, when they choose to follow a pagan society instead of Christ. Peter knows that the personal conflict that comes between obedience to God and social acceptance now, many of you have experienced this. See, you want to be ostracized. Your, your friend groups become very uh, small. And, and, and in most cases, you may not have any. It, it, it's, it, it can happen in the workplace. It can happen within your family. See, your allegiance to Christ is going to cause you to be hated. But even in those instances, we still have to be obedient to the one who made us and the one who died for us. Our obedience is to Christ. See, obedience to God will cost you something. And, 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 and you just think of this from the perspective of immature believers, babes in Christ. This is a lot to it is a lot to ingest. So like those Arabian horses that were being trained, we have to go through rigorous training to be prepared for what you will endure for when you come to Christ. Therefore, he encourages them to set their hope fully on the grace they received when Christ was revealed in verse 13. See, the revelation of Christ refers to the fulfillment of his promises. For, for example, an inheritance that we will receive in, 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 in uh, verse 4 of chapter, uh, chapter 1 of uh, 1 Peter. And of salvation in, in uh, verse 5. Matter of fact, uh, just for context, I'm, I'm going to go to... Go to those scriptures. First uh, Peter chapter uh, 1, verse 4 and 5. And unto an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded, ooh, are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in these last times. This is the word of God. See, you have a you have a promise. You are sealed. You have protection by God when you come to Christ. The revelation of Christ refers to the fulfillment of his promises. See, in other words, revelation brings full experience. It brings the full experiences of Christ's favor or grace and it's and it should therefore be prayed for and longed for there there is hope that that emerges from our relationship that they they have that 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 you have as children of God you 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 it, there is such a hope that comes out of the that bursts out of the hope that you have as being a child of God more specifically an obedient child this, this relationship enables and commands their obedience. Thus, Peter argues the command of obedience springs forth both hope and relationship. See, much like earthly families, parents require a certain obedience from their children 
in Ephesians chapter 6, it states that, that uh, uh, children, honor thy fathers and mothers, for it, if honor thy fathers and, fathers and mothers, for it will make your days long on the earth. It's the first commandment with promise. They see, this is this is God's word. So, so if we are to be obedient to our earthly parents, we also, without a doubt, have to be obedient to our heavenly Father. The kingdom of God, it's near. It is near, and 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 we have to have preparation, and we have to be obedient. The cost of obedience the cost of obedience. Christ's life for redemption in verses, uh, chapter one, verses 17 through 21. Uh, if on one hand, Christians are children of God, they have been rightly reminded to be obedient children and and, and, and to realize that true children of, of God have to live holy because he is holy. Now, Peter balances his argument this way. If, if, if on the other hand, they call God father, they should remember his character. If you call God father, you should remember his character. And if you call him father, you should act as such. See, allow familiarity to to be it. Don't act, don't don't allow familiarity to be be to be an excuse for your evil. Just because you call him father, don't don't think that his 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 grace is 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 supposed to be misused. That that you have a. a, a free reign to just do whatever you want to do without obedience to your heavenly father. Uh, I can live as I wish because my relationship is with God. Now, think about your earthly father and think about that concept. Do, do you have the right to do whatever you want to do in your parents' home and they provide everything for you? God supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory. So you have, you have been mandated to be obedient to his word. This, 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 this goes without question. Now, Peter reminds his readers that the cost of their redemption was Christ. The reason you have not received death, hell, and the grave is for the redeeming love and the redeeming power of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. This is how you have been redeemed back to the family of God. Without Christ, you have nothing. Who gave his life completely and sacrificially, making possible the believer's justification and uh, to be declared holy and the sanctification that set them apart and made them holy. All by Jesus. When God looks at us, he doesn't see that old stinking way we were, that filthy rag. He sees the righteousness of Christ. We have been covered in the blood of the Lamb. Now, now God, who gave his son to die, also resurrected and glorified him. Therefore, the believers rightly placed his hope and faith in God. The cost of obedience demands that Christians choose obedience to God over acceptance of society. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, society and culture cannot save you. There is only one that can save. He is the truth, he is the way, and he is the life. And he goes by the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy One, the Lamb of God. That's, that's, that, 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 that's, how you live uh, through him. Mm. Choose obedience to God over your acceptance of society. There, there is nothing we can sacrifice that matches the risen Christ. There's, there's nothing we can do. There's nothing, no accolade. There's nothing that you can accomplish in this life that can, can satisfy God's wrath that that and, 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 and the and the separation that he had with man. 
Jesus was the mediator. He is the hand from heaven that touches earth. Oh, you got to say thank you, Jesus, today And when you really think of that in this context. If Jesus had not done what he what he came to do, and he could have just as well and said not to do, but he chose to because of his love. We owe him our obedience. See, the, the consequences of obedience, love and unity among the believers. See, having established the basis of basis for holy living in, in the command and the cost of obedience, Peter now turns to the consequences. He assumes they are fully intimate Christians. For, 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 for he says, since you have, you have purified yourselves by your obedience to the truth, you have purified yourself by the obedience of the truth. What do you say? What does that mean, Pastor? You you you've been you you you've been set apart. You've been you've been cleansed because you've accepted the truth of the revelation that Jesus Christ died, buried, and resurrected. That He is God's begotten Son, and that He is the He is the second of the Godhead. He is He is God. He is God in the flesh. He is the living Christ. He is God. The God man. And when they accepted this truth, it changed, it changed their, their thinking. See, the image of purification is, is, is that of Old Testament washings that made one ready to participate in the religious system. In uh Exodus uh, chapter 19, verse 10, and Joshua 3 and uh, verse 5. Peter's audience came to this state through the obedience of the truth. See, the only way you can come to obedience if you accept the truth that God is and Jesus is who he says he is. See, the result of their conversations, the justification, the sanctification is sincere love for your brothers followed immediately by a command to deepen and intensify this love. Not only your love for, for Christ that saved you, but the love for your fellow man. See, your obedience, the more you are obedient to God's word, the more his presence becomes with you. The more intimate you become with Christ, the more you submit to his will and his way, the more you'll have encounters with him. See, Christian invitation in, in, initiation uh confession repentance and commitment baptism moves one from the kingdom of darkness to out of the world to the kingdom of god to 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 the kingdom of light his part of the fellowship is not ice is not isolated believer the social acceptance that that entices Believers to sin has no power when the community of faith unites in love. It, see, we, we, we're faced with persecution constantly. Believers must bond together in obedience to God and, and, be, a, and, and be enabled by relationships that, that demanded by sacrifice and perpetuated by love. See, this, this is what the, the community of faith really looks like in obedience to God. This is what, what, what a Christian looks like. As they codify these principles, they, they will stand firm against temptation and follow and not follow the crowd. They will seek not the things of this world, but they will seek the things of God as Christ reveals himself to them. You are purchased with the blood of Christ. Your life's purpose is to glorify him in holy obedience. The church is the body of Christ. That means that we are a representation of him on the earth. We are the manifestation of him in the earth. We are the hands and we are the feet of God. 
And while we're here being the hands and feet of Jesus, we have to be obedient to him through us. Imagine our actions, our behaviors, our principles, and our values must reflect our full, full allegiance to God as children of God. Christ commanded us to take the gospel message to the entire world. He wants no one to die without him as Savior, the Lord of their life. He has entrusted us with the gospel. Imagine the risk involved when we, when we choose social acceptance over obedience to God. See, our behaviors, our habits, our, our attitudes, our, our, our expenditures, our, our schedules, they reflect our obedience to God. Our response to his command to be holy because I am holy. You can tell the, the direct influence of being obedient to God in our behaviors. Make it your passion, people of God. Make it your passion to live in absolute obedience to God. Fully committed. Fully submitted. Follow him when it's not popular. In most cases, it's not popular. You know, Jesus, Jesus is not number one with a bullet on the charts. Jesus is, is counter countercultural. But he is everything. When it seems expensive, and most of all, when society tells you you're wrong, follow him even when you aren't sure where you're going. See, Jesus told you to, hey, to, 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 to gain your life is to lose your life. you got to leave everything behind that used to be you. You have been reborn. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. You had to leave all those old things at the at the altar. See the 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 the, the prayer of of monk Thomas Marathon beautifully expresses the uncertainty of obedience in the in these words. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. People of God, we were purchased with Christ's blood. Your life's purpose is to glorify God in obedience. That's why on a Friday on a hill called Golgotha, Jesus the Christ was nailed to a cross. He was nailed to a cross and he was lifted up high. The word declares if I be lifted up, I will draw all men on to me. He was pierced in his side and he died. He stayed in a borrowed tomb for three days and three nights. In early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Heaven and angels stood in and cheered on the king of glory. His father gave him all authority over the earth. All power means all power. Jesus is all powerful. Make your choice today. Tomorrow might be too late. To have obedience and allegiance to the risen and living king, Jesus Christ. I'm your pastor, Andre Andrews of Jehovah Jireh Bible Church. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it.